This holiday season, we all wish for hope and healing. Children and families who spend their holidays at the hospital deserve a reason to believe in first steps, in giggles, high fives, and hugs. For 150 years, Children's National Hospital has provided world-class care and groundbreaking research. Please donate today to help patients and healthcare heroes this holiday season. Visit childrensnational.org slash holiday. That's childrensnational.org slash holiday. Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with carrier. Products sold separately. That long day behind you, good times lie ahead. With company worth keeping, that'll bash a smile on your head. Come on in, the doors open, you'll find just the finest folks here. Pull up a chair, grab a drink, and let our stories your ear. Cause we're the talk, talk, talk the tavern. Here you're always welcome. The talk, talk, talk the tavern. Promising beer and bed love. The talk. Music, medicine, then some to talk, talk, talk the tavern. The song's over. Here we come. Okay, and welcome to Talk of the Tavern. Tonight, our topic will be presenting yourself. Take that as you will. We'll talk about that in a little bit here. Um, Want to let everybody know that this is an adult show with adult language, humor, and low taste. So... We're probably going to say something that upsets somebody. Hopefully it's the person next to you and not you. Uh, besides that, let's see here. We're recording podcasts here, so we do have a live studio chat audience, which we may respond to some of the comments when you hear this noise. It means we want to read some of those comments, so we might read them without that noise. So, chat, keep in mind, we might not read all your stuff out. It has to be relevant and entertaining, preferably both at the same time, but one or the other is okay most of the time. And for the podcast folks, keep in mind, we are responding to some of those folks. I think that's pretty much uh, all I need to do besides say I'm Travis, and my vices tonight are some good, strong bourbon, some nice, bubbly Coke Zero, and uh, a heart full of bitterness. Mm, it's delicious. I like the way it feels on the back of my tongue. Now, let's mm. go ahead and introduce that infamous co-host, the man with the most, Ed. Hey, what's up, people? Um, I'm having a screwdriver made with fucking vodka. Um, and uh, Amy, you're quite welcome. Yes. Hi, everybody. What's the difference between fucking vodka and regular vodka? It's effing vodka. E-F-F-E-N. Oh. And uh, he was welcoming Amy because he slipped her a little uh, sub. If you know what I mean there? Yeah, I did. Kevin? Oh, yeah. Travis, you charming gentleman. Good evening, everyone. I'm the show's token Brit. This evening, I'll be smoking hand-rolled drum tobacco. Uh, I'm currently drinking Ghost Ship, uh, which is a nice citrus-backed, uh, nice hoppy ale by Adnams, which is a Southall brewery here in the UK. Uh, one beer free beer of the year last year. Very nice. Uh, and this evening, I'll be bringing to the table bitterness and the ability to say cunt a lot. Very good. Cool. I feel that's something woefully lacking in my life. So what about everybody else in chat? What is your vices tonight? Let us know. And anybody else who is listening via podcast, you can always contact us at talkofthetavernshow at gmail.com. That's talkofthetavernshow at gmail.com. And don't forget to check out our merch that's always available just by uh, bit.ly slash Tavern Merch. That's bit.ly slash Tavern Merch. Okay, on with the topic. So we want to talk about presenting yourself, which might well mean uh, dropping trousers, putting on the overcoat, and heading over to the park, 
or it might mean how to dress for an interview or just mm -hmm. how to not necessarily imprint a style upon yourself so you look stylish, but to make a style out of being who you are and what you like to wear. So we'll dance around all those topics real quick. And I want to, if Ed is ready, I think he has a whole list of thoughts and concepts on this. You would be wrong. Usually. <laughs> Thanks for pointing it out loud, though. I appreciate that. Um, so, Ed, when it comes to presenting yourself, yeah. when you meet somebody for the first time, what's the one thing you do that you think stands out in how you present yourself? Oh, I, I, I don't know that I worry about it so much anymore. That in itself is a thing. Okay. Not worrying about if you're impressing somebody is actually an excellent character quality. Because then you come off very natural and relaxed mm -hmm. and confident instead of, you know, suffering or a suck up or whatever. Is that is that is that a spot on his camera or is that a spot on my screen? Kevin, do you see a spot on his cheek there that moves around? Yeah, that's it. it. On the nose. I, I, I just I, to be honest, I figured he was just like seeing we'd got one of those beauty spots. And it moves around. <laughs> there you go. Mm, wow. <laughs> so what about you, Kevin? Do you have any sort so, of So yeah, I mean I think yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think it gets, you have to reinforce it to yourself more as you get older, especially, I mean, hopefully as you get older, you're getting more entrenched into your career. So you were talking about hopefully more promotion interview than you are interviewing for a new job. But I mean, you never know what life's going to throw at you. You do when you're older have to remind yourself, not necessarily to take care of yourself, but that people will judge you on your image because Ed's quite right. It becomes far less important to you as you get older, not just your own image, but you, you learn the image is not necessarily a great first indicator of somebody. Uh, I, I've met some of the mm. roughest buggers I've ever known in suits and ties. And I've met some of the most, you know, sort of um, upright and decent human beings I've ever known wearing shit kickers and biker leathers. So mm. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not always a good indicator in every circumstance. So I think you learn to apply a filter to how important it is. So are these and all just customers that, that, that you've met in the back room? Uh, well, you know, I've worked in the, the pub and catering trade for the, the best part of 30 plus years now. I've, I've met every character from every walk of life, I think. Very good. Very good. So you don't, think you have any certain thing that you do when you present yourself or wear or mannerism that is striking whether it's done purposely or unconsciously i think the in terms of approaching an interview myself the one thing that someone told me years well, ago not it, just is an that, interview kevin but meeting somebody for the first time yeah, I mean, uh, that, I mean, if it's a deliberate meeting, if it's one that's pre-planned that you know is going to happen, rather, or are you talking about just like you're in a pub and someone's like, oh, hey, this is so-and-so? Right, right. Just meeting somebody on the street, maybe a stranger, maybe a cab driver, maybe a customer, just anytime, any point, anywhere. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, I suppose so, to a certain extent, in that, uh, I'm a pretty laid back guy. I'll talk to anybody, you know, yeah. and if I don't like your opinion, I'm more likely to just keep my mouth shut until I can quietly exit the situation tactfully than I am to argue with someone. So I come across as pretty easy going, I think. Uh, it's, I often get an intriguing reaction when someone's working for me for the first time and they've gone a few weeks of not fucking up. Because it's, it's almost like an inner smile building because I know that eventually they're going to see the other side of me and it's going to be like, where the fuck did that come off from? I thought you were nice. I am 95% of the time. There we go. <clears throat> I'd have to say for both of you, the way you both use your voice is a very specific 
character trait that you both use when presenting yourself. Kevin, you're very dynamic in your voice, and you will play voices of yourself at given moments to instantly create that comedy or create that intensity or whatever. Ed, you use your voice almost like a padded bat where you kind of pat people and they're like, this can't hurt until you want it to. (laughs) It's almost comforting until you really crack that bat against the side of their head. Um, But yeah, I think there's definitely ways and also ways you both carry yourself that the, the nonchalance of, I don't give much of a fuck till I have to. Till there's mm. a reason I need to. And also, uh, I, I'm going to speak more to Ed on this one than, than Kevin. Ed, you have a very s- specific style. Uh, either clothing. kilt or cargo pants. Right. But also the shirts that you wear with them and whatnot. The, the mm. over-armor shirts and whatnot that you tend to wear. It's... It's relaxed, but it's not necessarily... It doesn't feel like you're wearing raggy t-shirts and shorts. Hmm. There's still a level of quality to it, even though it's casual. And it's not a quality... I used to... In a previous episode, we were talking about strip clubs. And I used to know people who would attend strip clubs on either side of the pole frequently. And they're like, oh yeah, you could just pick out who has a real whatever name brand polo shirt and a real Rolex watch or a real and I'm like really there's people that can like 12 feet away gauge by branding the cloak and I guess there is Mm -hmm. but that plays with you there too Ed where you present yourself as you know I didn't necessarily pick it up at Walmart but I didn't necessarily go bust the bank at (laughs) where the fuck is the expensive places now anybody know uh, is it Macy's anymore? Saks Fifth Avenue? Where, where where do you go to get like overpriced shit that you don't need? Any uh-huh. store anywhere these days. Isn't it? Yeah, that's true. It's a so. Hold on, I'm going to read a quick comment. Um, check on a couple of comments. So. Kennedy says, it's funny, my closest friend's dad was a surgeon, a pilot, a millionaire, and while he wore a tie in his practice, he dressed in shorts and flip-flops as often as not. Seeing him at the hardware store, no one would know. He always treated me so well. (laughs) Get in the car, like a candy. If I met Ed, I might think, guess military background. Uh, Here's a fun fact. A lot of, um, a lot of people think I'm military or ex-military because of the way I carry myself and speak and interact. And especially military folks think I was military. Um, November there says, a warm, genuine smile and eye contact covers a multitude multitude of fashion crimes. I, I think the warm, genuine smile and eye contact... To, to throw it into the larger umbrella of just confidence and comfort in your own skin makes all the difference. I think the hard part is getting to the point in life where you are comfortable in your own skin. And mm. when you put on an outfit, of course a new outfit, even an outfit, if you're a suit and tie guy, you get a new suit, you walk a little differently in that new suit. If you're a t-shirt and shorts guy, you get a new goofy t-shirt, you walk a little different that first two or three times you wear it because it's new to you and you're kind of happy with it and haven't broken it in. Um, oh, Andrea says, guys who wear a watch and have clean shoes, clothing without rips or holes is a great first impression. <laughs> it's true. A lot of people notice functional jewelry such as a watch and shoes. Men and women. People are like, we have one friend, Aaron, who's often on the show. He's like, men will notice watches, women will notice shoes. Mm-hmm. Not so much. Men are noticing shoes. Why do you think so many men, mm-hmm. possibly using the term loosely, but look at the sneakers that are out now and how fashionable and design bright colors that pop. Um, Whatever. <laughs> I tell you what, I love me a pretty electric blue. Don't get me wrong. 
I, I upset an enormous amount of my staff by pointing out that black patternless trainers do not substitute for what is described in my dress code as black shoes. Going back to something November said, the, yeah. the warm, genuine smile, that's something that's been killing me with the mask wearing. <laughs> facial expressions are a big deal to me. I can't see anybody's fucking facial expression anymore. It's definitely, I, I've, you know, we've all heard the phrase, they have smiling eyes. And I've never been confused mm -hmm. by that phrase, but apparently a lot of people don't realize what eyes look like when somebody smiles because they're too busy. I don't know, checking hmm. out lips and teeth. I, I always try to look people in the eyes when I'm speaking to them, so I recognize a smile from the eyes. And now with these masks, that is something else that um, I think people are realizing. There is a smile in the eyes. Um, I, I can kill you with my eyes. I don't know that I smile very much with my eyes. Oh, you definitely do, especially when you get to giggling. Your eyes definitely take on a different shape, and you get all your little crow's feet and wrinkles at the corners, and all that. <laughs> Ed has been so expressive tonight. <laughs> it's, um, and by the way, uh, Flaming Bird says I do like a guy wearing a watch. Kennedy says I think probably Neiman. Oh, we're not worried about that. I'm sorry, I'm going to move on from that comment. We don't care. Uh, not because Kennedy said it, just because in general. Um, Flaming Bird says, I thought my ex was a dick when I saw his shoes. I was right. It's, uh, hopefully he was a dick in the right kind of way to please as opposed to just upsetting. And, uh, let me throw out a quick hello to a Lilith. Thank you for swinging by the tavern. Appreciate that. We are discussing presenting yourself. So we're talking about when you meet somebody for the first time and Kevin has brought up job interviews or interviews of any sort. Um, there's a way you present yourself. I was starting more basic level as just running across somebody and how you present yourself. Something, I like to wear hats. Homburgs, fedoras, pork pies, um, all kinds of hats. And a lot of times, younger men are like, wow, that's a great hat. And I almost want to warn them like a suit or a helm, like wearing your pants down so your ass shows and your underwear is up. Any of these things, it takes practice to get comfortable in different outfits. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to just put on an outfit you don't normally wear and walk around like you belong in it. There's an old saying of the suit is wearing him. He's not wearing the suit. And that means you just look uncomfortable at whatever you're wearing um, you don't look natural in it. But I think a lot of that bleeds off. Yes, Kev? I was, I was going to say, I have exactly the same thing, but in reverse. So the managerial policy for the company I work for is that because I am a manager, if I choose, I can turn up to work in loafers, jeans, and a smart shirt or something. You know, there, there's a less formal dress code for me as a manager than there is for the staff behind the till or carrying your plates. I turn up for work in smart black shoes, and iron black else. trousers with cr with proper creases ironed into them, a shirt and a tie. And I do that not only because I want to look like a manager, but because unless I'm dressed properly as I see it, for my job, I don't feel right. It's a bit like coming into work on your day off and then having to step onto the floor. You know, when I'm wearing jeans and a T-shirt, I don't feel like I'm, you know, that's what I wear when I'm relaxing at home. So it's almost in a sense like putting on a suit of armour. It, it changes my mindset. I get mm -hmm. dressed up, I put my smart gear on, and I step out on the floor as Kev the manager and not right. Kev the guitar player, Kev the chef, Kev that's the something. guy in the pub for a beer or whoever, you know, with a many other faces i've got you know that's something Travis. andrew and i have discussed many times is when you're going to work or you're going to the beach or you're going to the club or wherever you go you put on different costumes my work clothes are a costume there's something i put oh, on yes. to blend in with that atmosphere when i go camping with ed i wear specific things sometimes it's for functional reasons especially when camping and whatnot 
But other times, um, and by the way, Kennedy, that's true. That's very true for first time kilt wearers and a couple other comments. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just saw Andrea's comment about uh, people don't know I'm making faces on the mask. When I smile wearing the mask, I have crazy eyes. Um, <laughs> And Lily says, you mean what I would wear or my personality when first meeting someone, both Lilith or oh, either, yeah. um, just all the combination of things. Uh, she says, I wonder how long it would take me to get comfortable with a daily kimono. Um, and, and here's what I'm going to say. For years, I've dressed slightly different. I like the retro bowling type shirts. I like Hawaiian shirts. Um, I like khakis. But <laughs> Andrew just says I'm Jake from State Farm for work. Um, but it takes a certain when I can sit here on Twitch broadcasting and people come in and they see how I'm dressed and they're like, wow. And whether they're they're 13 or, or 63, they're like, hey, you've got some style. I don't have style. I have comfort in what I am. It's mm -hmm. a, I, I'm a fucking dork. Bottom line, but I don't give a damn. And that comfort, <laughs> it, it comes off as, as class and style. And I think you guys know me well enough. Class, style, not necessarily my forte. My son's a teenager and just getting to that age where he's thinking about the first sort of time in his life where he's having to face going into situations no, for interviews job interviews and university interviews but right. also lots you know lots of new situations where he's going to be going to new places meeting lots of new people and so he's talked to me not recently but a little while back about you know you got any advice about that because i work in management and i said to him then worry far less about what you're going to wear on interview day and focus on getting to know something about them so that you're comfortable because to be honest, you can go in the smart suit that you wear, but if you're sweating and you're nervous and you haven't got a clue what they're going to ask you, what you're wearing doesn't matter. It's true. And something else about asking questions is, A, it takes the attention off you. And everybody loves to talk about themselves. It's a natural human fact. Of course, then they have to gauge what to ask. You can't sit down at your job interview and go, so, you married? That's an awkward question at a job interview. But, oh, look at Draken. Thank you very much Draken for whipping your bits out in front of everybody. Appreciate that. Here's Happy late that. birthday. Cheers. We'll drink to that. There we we'll go. That. But uh, you can look at him and go, that's a great watch. Where'd you find mm -hmm. something like that? Or, what an interesting coffee mug. What's on that? Huh, check that out. Um... So what advice are you giving this young man about how to present himself in interviews, whether it's college or jobs or whatever? Well, funny enough, I said about a watch. Um, and we bought him a watch a couple of years ago for his 16th birthday. Uh -huh. uh, and I said to him, you know, especially, and it's a modern age thing again. I don't know whether this is just my age gap showing now, but. <laughs> oh, an awful lot of people, even older people, automatically, we all use our phones now to check the time. It's there. You've always got your phone in your pocket. It's two seconds to go like that and check what the time is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Problem with that is if you do that in a work scenario, it means, A, you've got your phone with you at work. Now, that may or may not be permissible depending on what your job is. But every time you look at it, there's the chance that you get distracted by other shit on your phone which is not what I am paying you your time for. Plus, if someone is wearing a watch, that shows that they're focused enough to care what the time is. They're conscious of the passage of time, which indicates to at least a minimal level a certain amount of organization and forethought. Mm -hmm. So it's a good visual cue that, you know, tie it. And also, it, it is literally a visual cue. You see a watch. Oh, there's a guy who's focused on time and timekeeping. You might not be at all. You might just be wearing the watch. But it creates that visual reinforcement of that as a concept to someone who's looking at you if they're in a position where they're, for example, weighing you up as a candidate for the first time, you know, and they're looking deliberately for a first impression. 
you know, then yeah, time pieces are important. Jumping back to Andrea mentioned clean shoes. She didn't just mention shoes. She mentioned clean shoes yeah, and clothes without holes in it. This is something I'd like to hit on when it comes to impressions. You can be in jeans and flannel and sneakers. You can be, have long hair that just kind of hangs out shaggy. But there is a difference between being clean and dirty. And I will guarantee the vast majority of the time and the vast majority of people will give you a little more respect if your clothes are not ratty and dirty and you are not ratty and dirty. Mm -hmm. So, Ed, using you for an example again, we're talking about like cargo shorts and fucking Under Armour shirts. But they're clean. There's no holes. There's no stains. And that gives a certain impression where the same outfit with, you know, and, and if you know, if you're pulling out from under the car where you were doing your oil change, <laughs> yeah, that that's those stained jeans and that flannel shirt with a hole in it, that works. That's that. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you're heading to the auto store to pick up that set of spark plugs or whatever and you show up in that, no, that, that actually shows a working man, just like I was discussing with a woman at work, smells on people. There's been a lot of women I've known that love the smell of a man who's sweating from working. Now, by that maybe cutting grass, maybe working outside in the sun, that doesn't mean they want to cuddle up to a sweaty guy. It's just nice to be like, that's the smell of a hard-working man. Nice. Do I want to lick that sweat off of them? Some might, most don't. <laughs> it's uh, but for a small price, I know a. <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned this. I hired a kid recently, and um, as you know, yes, I do have a military background, right. as Kennedy said earlier, and so uniform and appearance is a big thing to me, especially on the job. We wear uniforms to work. I work in the security industry. You wear a uniform to work every day. Tuck in your shirt, put on your belt, put some damn polish on those shoes. He worked for me for three months, had a pair, brand new pair of steel toe boots when he started. Three months later, the steel is already busting through the toe because what? he never put any damn polish on his shoes. No, no, no. If the steel is busting, the it has nothing to do with polish. That has to do with... Yes, it does. Polish doesn't stop you from wearing through the toe. It it will. It's, well, not the toe, but the top of it, where the steel is there. Okay. okay. Polish does have something to do with that. If it okay. gets dry yeah. and starts yeah. to crack, that steel is with it. Yeah, that's I thought it. you were saying <laughs> the toe was splitting and the steel underneath was showing. No, 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 okay. no. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that's actually something. That's a very weak point of mine. As much as I love different shoes, I'm horrible at polishing them. I really am. It's just not something, uh, perhaps no male role model. So nobody mm. ever fucking taught me how to polish a shoe. And See, I always did. I, I think sometimes if you've been in a youth organization, that's something you pick up if you're younger. Mm. Um, I was every, in the boys brigade when I was a kid and my dad was an officer in the boys brigade. So I had it drilled into me, not just cleaning your shoes. And I mean, not just with one of these wipe on sticks like you get now, but properly with polish and two different right. brushes, one for putting your polish on, one for taking your polish off, you know, <laughs> let the polish sit on the shoe when it's on, let it soak for a couple of minutes, let that moisture get into the leather and let it do its work, you know, and also cleaning brass, uh, with Brasso polish and an yep. old toothbrush, you know, getting it. Yeah, Ed knows where I'm coming from. Probably <laughs> in, in, in military background. It, it, See, I it's understand it. I'm just not practiced hmm? in it. It all it all boils down to three words. Everything we've talked about in the last five minutes: attention to detail. All these little signs, when you see them on another person say to you here is someone who has taken a little bit of time who has taken some care who has bothered to invest some effort that is something you are looking for when you're looking to employ someone or if you're meeting somebody new that's an indication that this is probably a decent upright person not a layabout which in my case would probably go fuck you man you look like a square i need someone who wants to get drunk but it's <laughs> you know it's always fun when people look at me and they see me 
but they don't see me. They don't realize there's six piercings and 18 tattoos. And, you know, I've, I've written these books. I have these podcasts that are internationally known. They immediately judge by, oh, look, he's wearing a collared shirt and a watch. Ugh, and khakis. <laughs> and then they talk to me for a minute. And then five minutes later... I say something that makes them go, wait, what did he just say? Did he just fucking twist or, or make whatever dumbass joke or, you know, make this reference that most people are like, oh, I didn't even know he did it. Um, so there we go. Andrea says, don't forget the nails. Here's what I'll say. Kevin, you said attention to detail. Here's the fun balance of that. It's attention to detail than not giving a damn that you did it. Mm -hmm. not pointing it yeah. out, not going, hey, make sure you look. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, take the time, pay the attention to detail, but don't do it in a flamboyant way where you're forcing it down someone's throat because it becomes obvious that you've done it solely for the purpose. It's like peacocking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it, you way, don't want to come across as, I have done this solely to create this impression on you. Otherwise, what's the if, point? If you take a moment to think about everything you said in relation to the next name I'm going to read the comment from, between your peacocking and, and a couple other things. Flaming Bird says, I've got military background to some extent, and there's so many things I must do in terms of appearance because of that. It, almost, it also affects my judgment of others. Um, and that is fair, by the way. It's when you go through the trouble, and you know how much or how little trouble it is to... Even do something, as I mentioned, you could be in jeans and sneakers and flannel, but still be clean and still be mm -hmm. neat. You don't have to be dirty. Um, and also, uh -huh. okay, here's something from an old man. For all you young folks out there, pull your fucking shoulders back. I don't sure. care if you're yes. a man, a woman, non-binary. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> pull your shoulders back. Huge difference psychologically on other people. It makes this weird impression. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Kennedy says, I want to be dirty. So, so dirty. <laughs> like shoulders back, chest, or tits out. Either way, it's going to show a level of confidence in yourself. Yeah, Kev. I just wanted to cast my vote for tits out. Carry on. <laughs> We're all for tits out here, okay? Whether you've got a shirt on or not, clear a bra on or not, bare chested. With MailChimp, you get a whole lot more than a URL. You get an all-in-one marketing platform to help drive sales. That means you can connect your data to make more informed, smarter decisions. And you get powerful automation tools like our customer journey builder to ensure you never miss an opportunity to turn shoppers into loyal customers. So if you're ready to integrate your marketing and boost sales, get started today at MailChimp.com slash smart marketing. MailChimp, built for growing businesses. While traveling, it's usually best to pack light. When it comes to money... Carrying some cash and having an alternative like Zelle is a great idea. Zelle's an easy way to send and receive money with people you trust at any U.S. bank. It's already in thousands of different banking apps, and it's money straight into your bank account in minutes fast. Look for Zelle in your banking app today. Safe travels. That is not. What's that? That is very much a first impression we want to give off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe we should, instead of uh, Travis Tavern talk, we should just call it Travis Tits Out. That's our next podcast. We'll just be Travis tits out. We'll be celebrating our new 5,000 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> In the first week. Uh, have you figured out who Flaming Bird is yet? Yes. Okay. I think so. think so. Well, Flaming Bird, here's what I'll tell you is if you want Kevin to guess out loud on air, you have to let him know he is not going to do it. If he in any way does not, I don't do that. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I never have done right. on air. We've been through this before. I don't call anyone out. No, on no. air. Yeah, not unless yeah, not unless I I've, I've checked with them before and I know they're cool with it. Yeah, that's why people have screen names. Okay, Kennedy. Kennedy's like uh, just uh, whatever. Although there are some literally can't do shoulders. Yeah. Okay. 
that's not who we're talking about. Um, we're just talking. <laughs> Hey, there's Ed's bits for everybody there. Don't do X three hundred. There's there's three of them though. Eddie, you like that girl from uh, Total Recall? It's uh yeah. Uh, what what do you have three of? I, I'm I'm down with. That. I just want you to know I'm fine with that. Hmm. Just check it. <laughs> hey, some people are calling it unnatural. Like yeah. There's Joe. Joe's a new fo- uh, person here to the uh, tavern. Okay, I let my tits out. How'd you know I had chickadees? Mmm, chickadees. And there's good gang popping in. We're just got the whole group coming in. Um, shoulders back does help posture. It also, this is a proven psychological fact. It helps your self-confidence. I'm sure that. It, it unconsciously adjusts your fucking attitude. It actually creates a positive flow mm-hmm. of chemicals within your brain and body. Just like Standing, put your hands on your damn hips instead of crossing them across your chest. Mm-hmm. Um, being, being conscious of your posture in work, especially if, if you work in a, a relatively static position, in other words, if you don't have a job where you're moving around all the time, it's really important to be careful aware of your posture. I had horrendous back problems for about three years, um, real intense lower back pain. And I mean, like, you know, a biting on the finger, proper mm-hmm. pain. Um, not just the Italian flick y'all thing? Uh-uh. Uh, no, yeah. Uh-uh. Um, I got a big, deep chopping block for the workstation I was based on in the kitchen I was working at at the time, like an old butcher's block, you know, like the big six, seven-inch deep wooden chopping blocks because I'm six foot eight. And I worked out eventually the problem was that I was spending a vast amount of my time at this particular preparation area without realizing it, just because I needed to be accurate with the knife, hunching right. ever so slightly without realizing it and holding myself in that position for prolonged periods of time. Got the block, shoulders back, stand up straight and still do what I always used to do. And literally within about a week, all my back pain went away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, look after yourselves, people. Make sure you keep your joints well lubricated. <laughs> in so many mm-hmm. ways. So let's let's uh okay I think first and foremost we we've covered a few things here and that is take a little time to take care of yourself it makes you feel better makes it gives a great first impression or fiftieth impression it shows you care about yourself confidence being not worried about what other people think you look like because you know you took care of yourself. Other, other things we mentioned, attention to detail, whether it's the watch, trimming your nails, your toenails, trimming your nails, whatever. So I think if you're trimming your toenails, you might be taking preparation for a first meeting or interview a little bit far. Well, and don't, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying if you're factoring that into a job interview consideration, well, you no, really want that job. If you're a woman wearing an open toe shoe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you want right. to take that into consideration because when that boss asks what your toes taste like, you want them presentable. Yeah. yeah. Not only trim your toenails, but if you're wearing backless sandals, get that shit off your heels too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> and now most people won't notice because most people are observant fucking brutes. But the right person will notice or the wrong person will notice. So it's worth doing. And then we mentioned pull your damn shoulders back. And that's whether you're sitting, standing, walking, whatever you're doing, pull your shoulders back. Each of you in chat tomorrow, make a concept, put a fucking post-it note on your fridge or your forehead, pull your shoulders back three times tomorrow and, and see how that goes. And once you can make that a habit, it makes a big difference in how just people deal with you. So, flipping the advice, let's give them thoughts. Because we've all been managers that have interviewed, other, interviewed others and hired others, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. We're going to do the rest of the show with Kevin's forehead. Enjoy. We're going to put Google eyes right on that fucking shit right there. <laughs> I, I've thought about doing that many times actually or getting a hat with a set of eyes on it so that every time when I look down you can Dude, just look at that character get like a instead. cookie monster hat with the eyes yeah 
That would be right, great. Yeah, that's been good. It's uh, that would be great. Not Elmo though, because don't be a cunt. So, uh, uh, right. Sorry. Back to. We've also been on the other side of the table as young people as well as as, as adults. Okay, Andrea says, pull shoulders back and pants up. Yeah, a quick poll here. Pull down. It, again, it depends, you know, you need to contextualize the first impression okay. you're trying to make. Really, all the way up or all the way down? No in between. Yeah, commit, commit, that's what we're saying. <laughs> um, quick poll in chat. Who has ever looked at somebody with their pants low enough to show their underwear? And by the way, could be a man or a woman you're looking at, either way. Underwear showing above the edge of the pants. And maybe it's just a half inch. Maybe it's a lot. And on a regular basis went, that's a good look. Just a yes or no. <laughs> There's even a, an emote in there. Yay or nay that you can use. Just throw the, the emote in there. Um, hard to type with shoulders back. Then you've got your keyboard in the wrong place, my friend. Well, I, I must confess, the chick with the G-string on and... The tramp stab with the back with the nice ass. I said, yes. But you know what? In a half shirt, it looks great. In a full shirt where it's just creeping up like they're pants. <laughs> Nova says, I just snorted. I'm laughing so hard at that question, Travis. Um, <laughs> Good Kang says, I don't think I've ever seen people with their pants down just enough to come. Oh, just enough. Come think of it. <coughs> <laughs> Elizabeth says, type with your tits. <laughs> really, really, whether that means using your tits to type or just having your tits around to type with, I, I don't know. Um, okay. So, no, I, again, it is a certain impression you get. Even if it's a woman where, hey, great, I love to see ladies' panties. I, I don't think that's an unnatural reaction. But in general, if you're in a job interview and you see a chick... Oh, we were speaking job interview. No, we weren't. Okay. Just It, it was oh. an in-general thing. But again, <laughs> if you're in a club, maybe that's okay. There are times... I'm sitting at work, by the way, every, so everybody knows, I do the hiring for Amazon. I do the mass hiring for the warehouses. And there are times when I'm sitting in my chair with my little plastic shield screen so we don't get COVID off each other. And a young man will step in front of me, and he's got four inches of boxers at my eye level. <clears throat> and I'm like, dude, do me a favor. Pull those up for a minute, because this is getting awkward. Because they're right here, man. And he'll pull them up, and I'm like, I couldn't help, and I won't stop. I'm like, I just keep, I, I just, it was eye level, and I couldn't help. I didn't know what you wanted. Okay, let's get back to the job thing. You cool, man? Like, it was him all the time. Um, okay, you know, Joe, I get that. I agree. Okay, so we've got those comments. Let's talk about advice that we give other people when interview interviewing. One of the base things I give everybody is dress one or two notches up from the job you're applying for. You don't want to go in a three-piece suit if you're trying to work at McDonald's. But, Wearing slacks and a polo shirt, not a bad idea. Same for a warehouse job. Um, you going to DMV to apply or some kind of business office? Yeah, maybe a coat and tie ain't a bad idea if you're a gentleman. Or a heathenistic brute pretending to be one for the job interview. What do you guys think? When going into a job interview, what's some etiquette for presentation of yourself? I taught my son when you go into a job interview, I mean, okay, don't do this during COVID. Disclaimer for anybody watching who <clears throat> may only have one brain cell. Uh, when you go into an interview, don't just go in and sit down in the chair, you approach the table or whatever, and you shake the interviewer's hand, or at least offer to shake their hand. Yeah, you be personal, you get close to them, you establish a bond with them, you make eye contact with them before the questioning starts. Because it... it Interviewing can be quite a dispersonal thing on both sides of the equation. It's not like you're just two mates meeting together for a chat about whether you'd be good for the job in the pub. There's a certain formality to it, so you're both kind of dancing around it. 
So creating a, a personal bond between you and the interviewer is good. Yeah, Andreas says always have a pen with you, which is actually great mm -hmm. advice for an impression. Yeah. Ed, what's some thoughts from you? I, I'm old, old school, and I know it is acceptable, the rule that you just said, two levels up for what you're applying for. Mm -hmm. In my day and time, though, it didn't matter. Jacket and tie. And Ed is five yeah. years older than me, so I'm learning from my elder here. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that impressed my dad when I graduated high school, and I rarely impressed my dad, was for Christmas that year, he asked me what I wanted for Christmas. I said a three-piece suit because I'm graduating high school and I need to apply for jobs. Very good. By the way, I love a three-piece suit. Here's what I'll tell you folks about three-piece suit. First of all, three-piece suit is nice. But you take off that jacket, you now have three other outfits that mm -hmm. you can wear. Because collared, button-up shirt, rolled all the way down with that vest, is a beautiful look. With the tie, pull it off, mm -hmm. now it's a little casual. Roll up those sleeves, it's a whole nother outfit beyond that. And this is something, it's suddenly very versatile. And if you walked into a job interview at a restaurant in a button-up shirt, no tie, and a vest with your sleeves rolled up, you now look so functional, but still well-dressed. It's a beautiful combination. And Kevin, you can give your opinion on that. Again, I know it depends on mm -hmm. if you're going to the five-star restaurant or not well, I, I agree with you i mean i've got uh, i have three suits uh two of them are two piece and one of them is a three piece and the three piece is probably the one i go to the most often even if i'm not wearing all three pieces ironically well, <laughs> um sorry finish your thought and then i've got more to add go on no that was pretty much it yeah i, I think you're right the, the three piece gives you that little bit of um you, when you get into a scenario in a restaurant quite often you're going to want to take your jacket off Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of these formal situations, wearing that jacket all night is going to be either too hot or just too formal. So it pays, you know, with a waistcoat as well, you've got the option of still remaining slightly more formal if you choose to when you're in a jacket off situation. So it depends on where you're wearing it to, yeah. Let me also recommend this. Buy vests or waistcoats, waistcoats depending which side mm -hmm. of the pond you're on. Buy these things. Buy them separate. Buy them individually. They go with jeans and a t-shirt. They go with jeans and a button-up shirt. They go with really anything, and it really does change how everybody treats you. Hey, Ed, how's that vest go with a kilt? <laughs> Very well. Fucking amazing, isn't it? Fucking, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Um, if I could read a couple comments, if I could interrupt us couple other people said uh, Kennedy says if it's an always if it's an office almost always a tie Wordwind says walk up to the desk table and hold out your claw grabber for a formal shake <laughs> um, in the era of COVID maybe not so much anymore folks so sorry so true but nine months ago I was preaching how to do handshakes to anybody that would listen that wasn't already doing them. So I agree with you, but in this era, we might want to look back at bringing the nice Victorian bow into style. Keep your eye on your language, says Gagang. If you let something slip, acknowledge and apologize. Unless if it's actually a fucking racist asshole remark, then just shake your head and leave and go back to McDonald's where you belong, you bastard. Um... Lilla says, I always shake before and after. God, I hope she's talking about hands, not like bathroom. <laughs> so many people are taken aback because I'm a woman. They look at my hand like it's a damn cobra. I'll add to Lilith there. If you're a woman, learn how to shake a hand. Now, if you're going to a formal dance where you're in a big ball gown, sure, give fingertips for that handshake. If you're going into a business meeting, put your hand out. The webbing between the thumb and the forefinger, meaning the other person's webbing between the thumb and the forefinger, grip the hand in a firm grip without squeezing it. In other words, you're stiffening your hand. And two to three pumps up and down. Learn how to do it. Practice that. 
it'll make a difference. Gagang. That's something I really need to do because I'm super casual with how I talk. Uh, Kennedy says, be prompt, be early. Yeah, I agree with this, but not too early. Half hour, too, that's too early. 10 to 15 minutes is good early. Some of my Indian co-workers aid that they, or said that they were warned on U.S. interviews by their friends not to be late. It's a cultural thing and it's good to be warned. <laughs> Versatile three-piece suit. If you get a suit, get it tailored. Good <coughs> advice there. What's amazing for the wealthy the tuxedo is actually casual compared to white tie. If you're wearing a tuxedo properly, Kennedy, you are wearing it with a white tie and a white vest and a white shirt. That's Victorian rules, by the way. Up to about 1915, and it started to change. <laughs> Joe, two to three pumps. Okay, raising Kansas, we can shake, not a normal thing. Practicing my pumping right now, says Elizabeth. Beautiful. Okay. Dragon official Jeez. says, one time I had a teacher who gave 30-second handshakes to everyone. That is awkward. 30-second handshakes was, uh, is like... There was the British comedian a few... Uh, actually, probably a few more years ago than I want to think, but um, he had a sketch show. One of his characters was a guy who would go to red carpet events as like a press interviewer, you know, where they're all just leaning over the barrier going, oh, hey, so-and-so, yeah. And they, he'd stop celebrities and shake their hands, and they, it was a running game to see how long he could shake their hand for before they thing. got uncomfortable and broke the grip. A few comments on the 30 seconds. Uh, Elizabeth says 30 seconds with a pump. Joe says 30-second handshake. That's pretty much a date. And then Kennedy backs me up on the vest waistcoat thing. His son once wore one to high school. And they named the day Handsome Joe Tuesday. The girls dug it. Dress up once in a while, and people won't be surprised when you do. And even just like wearing a flower in your collar, wearing a vest, wearing a watch, wearing that nice shirt, even if you roll up the sleeves. You're going back to, I mean, if you're wearing a suit, you're going back to what we said about watches earlier with attention to detail. If you're wearing a tie, buy a tie pin. I think it's yes. worth it just so your tie doesn't fucking go everywhere. I'm not even worried well, about that. Yeah, I was going to say for two reasons. One, it's 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 a smart accessory. It draws the eye and it's, you know, it's a smart piece of jewelry, same as wearing a watch. Mm -hmm. But also, yeah, there's nothing worse than wearing a tie and having it flapping around aimlessly all over the place out of your control during an interview. It makes you look messy and untidy. Yeah. So buying a tie pin helps you keep helps you keep your formal look and while you're way, sat at an interview. For those in the U.S., for anybody who's worried about it, three-piece suit, don't buy it at Target or Walmart. You can. Do what you got to do. Check thrift stores if you must. Get the right size. Here's the key. Save a little money. Go to Men's Warehouse or whatever adult, grown-up men's store and buy last season's suit. They are constantly drastically marking down suits that are last season style. Literally, three months ago, it's out of style. Last, yeah. Nobody fucking knows. Nobody cares. And if they do, well, they're a snob. <laughs> fuck them. So you're getting this thing half off, quarter off, and then if you watch the salesman, talk to the salesman. These salesmen love to call you when shit happens. Dude, We've got to buy one, get one free, and last season styles are 50% off. So you're now getting two suits for half the price of one. Right. You're still looking at a couple hundred dollars. It's rough, but now you have two suits in your fucking closet for 25% of the cost that they would have cost standalone. And they tailor them for you. Yep. Right there in the store. You pick them up three to five days later. It's worth it. And then you have a suit in your closet. Now go get a nice. I hat. have no. I have no choice. I, I've never in my entire adult life <laughs> been able to buy a suit off the peg. It's true. It's um, you know. Um, I strike yes, fear into the heart of tailors. I, I'm going to answer. A like a, 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 go ahead. I was going to say there's like a whispered hush that goes through the building when I walk in. Like this. It's uh let me let me answer a few comments here. I want to start with Elizabeth. Would they tailor it to, would they tailor to a woman? Yes, Elizabeth. And if they won't, 
then you buy that fucking suit, or if you buy it off eBay or wherever, take it to your local dry cleaner, specifically, not only, but I have seen to seen, the Asian-run dry cleaners often tailor. And they put you up on the fucking stand right there, pin it up, mark it with chalk, send you out the door, say, see you in an hour, get the fuck out. Uh, Weirdwin says, I have a lovely tie pin somewhere with teeny letters on it that says I can be very insulting. That is a beautiful moment. Kennedy says, I ideally go to a store that has a salesperson and will do adjustments. Off the rack is okay, but it's worth with a salesperson and tailor. Agreed. Fitting what I just said there. Um, yeah, and exactly. Andrea says to Elizabeth, yeah, they would tailor it and adjust it because you're paying them money. Nova November says, got a vintage Lenvedici gray pinstripe two-piece for $17 at a thrift store. Had it tailored. Bought a custom shirt and a vest at a proper clothier under $200. I bought a Pierre Cardin pinstripe black suit for $7. Exactly my size. Off the rack at a thrift store. Um... Oh, Joe says, I'm loving this formal wear discussion. It really suits me. But I'm I'll tie another one on, buddy. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, There's some flirting going on. <coughs> Let's go read this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Flaming Bird saying, I'll measure your inside leg for the tailors, Kev. And Kev is mm -hmm. like, uh, I paid top dollar for that. Hell, the right bottle of booze probably don't need a dollar at all. I, I don't know Flaming Bird well enough to speak with authority on that. I'm just saying. <clears throat> oh, Elizabeth says perfect fitted jacket with pants. Swap out with skirts. Awesome. So back to advice. Uh, <laughs> Draken says, I'm really invested in this discussion. Oh, I'm so proud yeah, right now. Maybe, maybe it suits you. Uh, you guys realize who Draken Official is in my world, right? I'll tell you do later. Do I? I don't know if I do. You tell me later. I'll tell you later. He doesn't necessarily want to be called out. So, um... Fair play. Here's what I'm saying. Ed, you got any closing thoughts on this topic of presenting yourself? No, I... We, we've covered it all. I mean, clean... Neat, tuck your shirt in, pull your fucking pants up. <laughs> Unless if you're concealed carrying or have a t-shirt, then there's times where you shouldn't tuck your shirt in. Yeah. Which and, concealed... and yes, Kennedy, I do have great kilts. Draken official is my son. Ah. Oh, so I'm so proud that he would drop a nasty pun. Good for him. <laughs> Kevin, closing, closing, cl or clothing thoughts. Closing thoughts. Uh, closing thoughts. Image is only partly created by your clothing. You can dress up or dress down or dress sideways all you want. You need to be relaxed. That's the key to you know, whether you're talking about meeting new people. Don't try and be forced. Don't try and force yourself. Don't try and put on. Did I? What happened? What'd you say, Ed? We freeze and unfreeze. I think that's you, oh, okay. Ed. He's good on my side. Keep going, Kev. Okay. Carry on, Kev. Uh, yeah, okay. all, all I was trying to say was how you carry yourself as a person and your confidence and personality, like we've said several times in this show, is just as important as the clothes you're wearing. So, yes, by all means, take your personal appearance into consideration and like ed said be smart be presentable you know create the best possible picture of yourself but don't try and play yourself false don't try and also with the clothing put on a different character or be someone you wouldn't normally be because you've got to concentrate hard enough on either you know, on people's questions without having to concentrate on trying to balance too many different things at once. So just, yeah, relax, be yourself, take a deep breath. Don't try and force yourself. 
to build on that or segue or parallel perpendicular. I'm going perpendicular to Kevin's statement here. Um, as for don't try to be a character, there are times we put on certain uniforms for certain situations. Because I am not myself at work, but I am a version of myself. The same thing when I'm meeting new people, etc. To bring out and go full Travis is not the right thing to do. That's general advice. I think Tropic Thunder said never go full Travis. Sure. <laughs> something um, like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. something like that. Um, but yeah, learning to be comfortable in your own skin. And then when you do change outfits, when you don't look 100% natural in that outfit. Instead, you look interested in what you're experiencing. And it's different from looking awkward. Um, <laughs> Flaming Bird throws, throws out a great little bit of closing advice here. Um, don't wear a new outfit to an important meeting. You'll be too self-conscious. It's true. I don't care if it's just new shoes that aren't broken in. And Joe says, never go full Travis. That's my new saying. And I think that's where we're going to wrap this up. I want to thank everybody. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Kelt Dub, Dracon Official, uh, for throwing bits, showing their their beautiful bits. Oh, that was a happy birthday. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you for that, Dracon Official. Uh, Kelt Dub for that gifted sub. Everybody else for hanging out and joining us right now. And... Sorry, I'm reading comments. I've got to ignore these idiots for a moment while I do my closing thing here. Don't forget, you could join us on um, email by sending in a comment or a thought about what's going on. And I'm going to check that email right now, see if we have anything. If you have a special day you want to remind people of or a special message you want to pass on to somebody on air, you just send us an email at Talk of the Tavern to show it. Excuse me, gmail.com. Other than that, I want to thank everybody for supporting the show, first and foremost, by showing up. Oh, my goodness. Kennedy, thank thanks you for whipping bit. your bitch Kennedy, out Kennedy, thanks, her. man. <laughs> Always appreciate it. And Andrea, and look at you all waiting to the last minute oh, to get yeah. your bits out. Yeah, Andrea did that. Thank you for that. Thank you. Stop all sound. Andrea right look chat through X one hundred and thirty bits ago, for Travis's you birthday. <laughs> thank you. It's his favorite. <laughs> um <coughs> Thank you guys all for being here hanging out and bullshitting with us. It's always a delight. Um thank you for all the bits, hosts, raids, subs. What's that? It's always a pleasure, never a chore. Oh, well, don't go too far on that one, Kevin. Let's just keep on with go closing instead. <laughs> I want to thank what are we talking about next week, Travis? Dude, it's in the chat. I can't look at it right now. I've got your <laughs> fucking pictures up. Hold on while I pull that shit up. I know we got Kevin again. Sorry about that. You couldn't add this in. You're the co-host. What are you doing all night? All right. We're talking about comfort, food, and memories. Hmm. That could be interesting. <laughs> yeah. It could And be. job identity and influencing co-workers. That could be interesting. Very good. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate that backup. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's say goodnight. You need let's a little black some... up every now and then. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Mm. Kennedy, <laughs> you never know, but I wouldn't remain overly optimistic. Guys, make sure you join us next week for the next topics as we record two more Talk of the Taverns for the podcast. Which, by the way, did as everybody know, we, as Talk of the Tavern, just a week and a couple days ago, accepted on Pandora, along with where we've already been on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Apple, Spotify, Google, Audible, Amazon, and so many more. Okay, so we're out of here. Closing music coming up. Here's to your faces. Oh, wait. How come we never remember the closing toast anymore? i got to write that down. I don't know. I don't know either. Oh, Travis, before I forget as well. Don't forget the closing toast. Yeah, you think I can spell it right? I'm going to just make this Kevin's job, whether he's on air with us or not. There we go. Look, nobody's going to send the police to your house if you publish a crappy book, but you'll learn with each one. Life lesson from author Michael J. Lawrence. There we go.
We're out of here. Good night, guys. Cheers, Cheers to that shit. Thank Do you, your everyone. thing. Thanks for joining us in the discussion shenanigans tonight. You are the one thing that makes the show what it is. Don't forget to join us at the tavern next week. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day and steamy dreams every night. Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with Carrier. Products sold separately. Holidays are here, and so is fashionable fitness. Gift yourself a Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G, a phone that folds in half to literally stand on its own. Pair it with the Galaxy Watch 4 for ultimate wellness and wow factor. Check health stats, flex personal records. Over 90 activities can be tracked, like biking, swimming, golfing, and more. Invest in yourself with tech made to crush goals. Holidays open up with Galaxy. Shop it all at Samsung.com. 5G connection and availability may vary. Check with Carrier. Products sold separately.